Hi guys, we will talk about regional and global strategy today. There is a bit of a misconception uh, in the field of global strategy uh, that perhaps uh, it really has to be truly global, that you might need to be in a great deal of countries and markets and have your sales uh, spread uh, in every continent. At least that was uh, the challenge um, that uh, researchers uh, Ellen Ragman and Ellen Berbeek uh, posed to the thesis by uh, Tom Friedman that the world is flat and uh, we are getting more and more globalized. Uh, well, this challenge and the idea of regionalization is valid. Indeed, uh, a lot of companies are uh, much more successful in the immediate region, say European companies in the EU or American companies in North America uh, or Chinese companies in Asia. Um, uh, we are seeing several challenges to this uh, dichotomy of regional versus uh, global. Uh, well, one of the approaches was to actually not talk about globalization versus regionalization, but to say that we are somewhere in the middle. It's the idea of semi-globalization. And it also links to the fact that a lot of us, including the top executives, are overestimating uh, how much globalized we are. Uh, for example, uh, executives uh, seem to overestimate how much trade is international um, as um, a share of GDP. Uh, or how many uh, of the internet searches are local versus global. Um, so that kind of global only gap of exaggerated perceptions of globalization reality is something that is, um, that is stressed by the semi-globalization perspective. Now, more recently, uh, we've seen uh, new, new vocabulary in terms of what kind of globalization can we, um, can we, um, have uh, today. Um, so the most recent research in the last 10 years, uh, in particular after the global financial crisis, has pointed to um, the quite distinct possibility and, and indeed reality of deglobalization. Um, so GFC has shaken uh, the world economy. Um, many countries have suffered uh, from the crisis. Inequalities uh, have increased. Um, and international trade uh, and investment um, have a somewhat, uh, somewhat stalled. Uh, not completely, um, but even before the corona uh, crisis, uh, we've seen much lower um, rates of growth of uh, international trade uh, and investment than we used to in, say, the golden age of globalization in the 1990s or even in early 2000s. Um, so we see trends of potential deglobalization. Some analysts call it perhaps structural reshaping of globalization. In particular, uh, we see a possible bifurcation of the uh, global uh, system into uh, one centered around the US um, and perhaps countries with the rule of law, and then another centered around China with quite a distinct uh, political economic system. Um, and in particular in the area of technology, we see uh, potentially two uh, different um, uh, systems uh, being created, uh, but perhaps in international trade and uh, in other aspects as well. Uh, so we see challenges uh, to globalization. Companies have to, in their uh, global strategy or in their international strategy, understand these trends of continued importance of the regional, um, Kind of you know reshaping of what regional means with uh, trade agreements such as trans-pacific partnership that, that spans uh, continents uh, from Latin America to Australasia to uh, um, to North America. Uh, so kind of rethinking a reshaping of globalization. Uh, we need to be aware that a lot of the globalization myths are, are overestimating how much we are globalized, so that's semi-globalization uh, argument, and um, uh, that uh, we need to, uh, we need to uh, also consider the possibility of deglobalization um, uh, 
um, as partly consequence of the corona crisis, but also of the previous uh, big crisis that we experienced in 2008-9, the GFC. Now, looking into the future, uh, I would say, uh, I would propose that I think we'll be getting re-globalized and the exact form of uh, that re-globalization um, will be important. So, so the re-globalization will be not just a return to the previous version of globalization uh, before 2008. Um, it uh, will be something different, reshaped. Uh, I would call it e-globalization. And, and e means, I think, at least two or three things. Uh, first, what traditionally the e means in, in business, e-commerce, e-business, kind of digital uh, reshaping of globalization. I think uh, we might be you know, traveling less physically, but we'll be much more connected, and we are uh, digitally. Uh, the companies will be uh, more and more embracing the digital business models. The role of technology will be uh, increasing in international business. And we have to rethink global strategy as, as e-strategy, as digital strategy. Now, the second aspect of the e, I would say, would be uh, ecosystems. And I think here we can think about that in both business and actually uh, literal ecological terms. So uh, increasingly the ecosystems and platforms of interrelated complementary uh, companies uh, operating in, in, in large uh, uh, platforms and ecosystems uh, that might be split globally into, I don't know, the China's uh, sphere of influence and America's sphere of influence uh, or, or smaller systems of uh, of interrelated players, that will be crucial to, uh, to um, strategizing in the international arena uh, and your positioning uh, in competition. And then I think ecosystems, we need to also take it literally that we are living in a world and, and globe and global strategy are, are linked to the idea of, of our world, of our earth uh, as, as an environmental system. Uh, we are, um, Life creatures, uh, there's this other creatures uh, in the world and uh, uh, there's uh, uh, resources that sustain us. Um, so I think there'll be a lot of rethinking in terms of energy, uh, in terms of uh, um, e-mobility. Um, and uh, um, we need to uh, think um, about uh, the environmental and energy underpinnings of uh, business uh, systems. Uh, so we need to take the concept of ecosystem um, more literally uh, and think not just about business ecosystems but about uh, us being connected uh, in the environmental systems. Um, so these are my ideas about kind of new thoughts on uh, global versus regional strategy.